Your accuracy from three or the looks you were giving them from three? Uh, early on, our, our press was bad. It was just bad. And they got open threes right off the bat off of our press. Uh, we were underneath them a little bit too much early. That's how we got six threes in the first half. So that was disappointing because that, you know, if you play this team, I mean, they do a really good job with their handoff action. They have a really good low post player in Groose. And then they're going to shoot threes. They made 10 threes against Gonzaga. I mean, they make threes. And Casper Bauer made five against Gonzaga on the road. So that was, that's what's disappointing when you say, okay, three point shooting team, get up, get up and guard. Uh, but again, it all started with, you know, poor execution with our with our defensive pressure at full court, uh, and then uh, they got going a little bit. And, you know, to their credit, they were executing. They, they weren't coughing it up and turning it over against the press or anything like that. So they were they were getting shots, and, and they're going to shoot threes, and they they've got multiple three point shooters on the floor at any given time. In the first half especially, you can tell the difference almost when Anthony was on in the game and when he wasn't in the game and he got eight assists, no turnovers. Uh, what is he, how has he grown as a point guard? And well, he's seeing things. Uh, you know, a matchup zone is not the easiest thing to play against unless you have feel for how to play, unless you see it. And, and he, he made great decisions when to pass it in, when to drive it into the gap, when to drive it on the baseline, when to shoot it, when not to, and when to fake him. I mean, he was, he was, I mean, it's just no turn, but he was terrific. Tonight. You guys relied on Matt a lot to make threes. Is this just part of the adjustment, to learning to kind of play? A well, Zach's pressing him. He's actually terrific at three point shooter. He is pressing. And I told him, I said, he took one bad shot. The last one he took was a bad one. You know, he turned it down. He didn't catch it right. He was a little deep. You know, I thought Oglesby and him took good threes. They're going to make them. Uh, Mike's going to make some, obviously. Uh, Clemens can make some. We got a number of different guys. You know, obviously Matt was was really special in that area, and not only in terms of his ability to make them, but his ability to stretch the defense because of how they guarded him. Was it an energy thing tonight, Fran? It seemed like when you guys played with intensity, especially with the press, you played well. Well, early on, what they did was they they inbounded with their point guard. You know, sort of let him get let it, let the guy he threw it to get trapped, throw it back to the point guard, and then he took it. Okay, so what we needed to do was trap stronger and maybe shoot the gap and get after him a little bit more. But that spreads you out. So I do think the energy level wasn't what it needed to be, but the execution wasn't. And you know, to their credit, they did some good things to get the ball down the floor. They essentially, for a good portion of the game, were playing four guards anyway. Those teams are, are oftentimes hard to press because they have so many good ball handlers. That and the fact that the guy they're inbounding the ball to is their five man, who's a very good ball handler. I mean, he's a, he's a skilled player and there's a handful. It looked like in the first half you were playing Basabi at the post and Gabe didn't play, but when he, you put him in, he made the most of his minutes. Gabe? Yeah, Gabe had a lot of energy. Gabe was terrific. I mean, he almost had a double-double. Yeah. But the thing that he did was he played relaxed. He didn't make any mistakes. Uh, you know, when Bruce was taking him into the post and shot faking him, he was staying down and making, him, making it hard to shoot over him. Uh, really followed the game plan. But you could, you could see in his face he was playing relaxed, and that, that was good to see. And I guess what kind of led to that? I mean, that's something that he's struggled with, you know, being able to settle He down. has, and I was worried about that because, you know, I really like to get him in in the first half. And you put a guy in with 13 minutes to go, I think it was 13 or 11, I can't remember, but... A lot of times, you know, he's been sitting for so long, he's bound to be a little bit nervous or a little jumpy. But he wasn't. I think what he did was he was able to really study what was going on in front of him and then come in with an understanding of, okay, the game plan was this, this is what I'm looking at, this is what we need right now, and effectively execute that. How has Mike taken to move into the two? Um... Mike's just a team guy. I mean, whatever it takes, coach. I mean, I'll play the two, I'll play the one. He knows he's going to play some one, he knows he's going to play some two. We're fortunate we have three guys who can play the point. Uh, it's been a little bit of an adjustment because he really wasn't at the two at all, uh, you know, since, since he got here in, in, in the summer. So he's essentially learning the two spot on the fly. And so he forgets to go where to go sometimes, but little by little he's figuring that out.
I mean, he was your guy. He was going to be your point guard, and then to just kind of seven games into his career move over to the two and yeah, slide you over. Know, and I don't know. That, I mean, right now it looks like that's you know a good move. I mean, he'll he'll play a ton of one, but he is such a good scorer and he's so good, you know, off the ball. We'll play him in both places. Any specific reason that uh, Woodbury only played 16 minutes? He looked dominant at times. Well, we had other guys that came in, and, and at that point we were up 20, and I wasn't going to put him back in. Okay.